Elon Musk announced yesterday that Tesla Semi was setting out on its first cargo trip from Gigafactory 1 to Fremont Factory, but he shared the news before the prototypes had actually completed the 5- to 6-hour long trip. Interestingly, the two electric truck prototypes have now been spotted at a supercharger station near Sacramento, a little more than halfway through the route. There's a lot of hype around the Tesla Semi because if the specs and price point that the company is claiming are true, it would create a new standard and revolutionize the cost of freight transport. A Tesla Semi test program partner already said that performance specs are for real, but some people are still skeptical about the range, which Tesla claims can be up to 500 miles on a single charge with a full load. The vehicle is currently being put through a test program and Musk said that he is even optimistic about beating those specs that competitors already don't believe possible. A successful demonstration of a full cargo run between Tesla's Fremont factory and Gigafactory 1 in Nevada would already go a long way to prove the naysayers wrong, but it doesn't look like it will be the case with the first run. Tesla did a pit stop at a supercharger station in Rockland near Sacramento as spotted by a Redditor. One of the two Tesla Semi prototypes can be seen using at least one supercharger charge point. It's not clear if the trucks actually needed to charge or stop for testing or any other reason. The Tesla supercharger in Rockland is just about 132 miles from the Tesla Gigafactory 1 where the trucks reportedly started their journey. General Motors returned to the medium-duty market after a decade-long hiatus with the 2019 Chevrolet Silverado 4500 HD. 5500 HD and 6500 HD chassis cab trucks, unveiling the new line at the 2018 Work Trucks Show in Indianapolis on Wednesday. The 2019 Silverado 4500-6500 HD features a bold and muscular front design and is powdered by GM's 6.6-liter Durham XV8 diesel engine. The truck, designed in partnership with Navistar International Corporation, was designed to be completely flat to provide greater ease for upfitters to customize. A factory installed rear air suspension is available for improved ride quality. The arrival of the Silverado 4500-6500 HD puts GM into competition with the Ford F450, F550 and F650, as well as the Ram 4500 and 5500. This segment also includes commercial truck makers such as Navistar's international brand, Daimler, Hino, Fuso and others. GM has not sold a medium-duty truck since it pulled out of the market in 2009. Vocational trucks of such size are typically used for work such as hauling trailers, utility maintenance, conversions into ambulance use and other services. The Detroit automaker may have to grab market share from existing competitors, depending on the class of truck. According to Statista, a market research firm, sales of Class 3 through 5 trucks are expected to level this year at about 380,000 vehicles. The automaker may have an easier road one notch up. According to Statista, sales of Class 6 and 7 trucks are expected to grow 7% this year to nearly 133,000 vehicles. Steve Tam, an analyst with ACT Research told Trucks.com, it is a mature market and GM is going to have to battle to get back into it. The automaker, however, will attract customers who have wanted larger Chevrolet trucks and bought from rivals because the automaker didn't have the right models, he said. GM's rivals are unlikely to yield sales without a fight. Kevin Coaster, Ford's medium-duty truck and F-Series Super Duty fleet brand manager said, We've been dedicated to this space for a long time. Our marching orders are to lead the segment. Ed Pepper, vice president of GM Fleet and Commercial Operations in the U.S. said, The decision to return to the medium-duty segment is targeted at attracting more business from commercial and government customers. GM Fleet delivered nearly 300,000 vehicles to commercial and government customers in 2017, its most since 2008, the automaker said. The increase helped GM gain 1.4 percentage points of market share. 
Pepper said that the Silverado 4500-6500 HD models are part of GM's strategy to continue that momentum by expanding Chevrolet's product segments. The idea that commercial customers prefer to buy vehicles of different sizes from one automaker, rather than purchasing one size from Chevrolet and another from Ford, for instance, is a common refrain among automotive executives. Pepper said, the more choices we offer truck customers, the more we drive sales across our entire portfolio. That's because brand and dealer loyalty run deep in this business. GM will provide order guides to potential customers in spring 2018 with pricing to be announced in the summer. Production will begin by the end of the year. The automaker expects the new line of Silverado medium-duty trucks to be carried by more than 400 commercially focused Chevrolet dealers. The frame was designed to be completely flat and free of obstructions on top. Wiring is fed through the frame itself rather than on top of it. GM believes this will provide upfitters with easier installation and removal of bodies and cap styles. The trucks will also have lengthened frame rails behind the rear axle to accommodate long cargo boxes and a lightweight hood that provides greater access for maintenance and repairs. The Silverado 4500-6500 HD promise an improved driving experience compared with other medium-duty trucks thanks to a hood designed to increase visibility, good turning radius and the availability of the factory-installed rear air suspension. GM also installed the diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF, tank on the opposite side of the fuel fill tank to reduce refueling errors. John Schweitman, director of commercial product and medium duty for GM Fleet said, these new Silverados are designed to solve the most common upfit and ownership challenges fleets have with many of today's medium duty trucks. The 6.6-liter Durham XV8 turbo diesel engine is the same power plant in GM Silverado and GMC Sierra heavy-duty pickup trucks, though with smaller turbochargers, different engine mapping and other slight modifications. In the Silverado 4500-6500 HD the engine has been tuned to 350 horsepower and 700 pound-feet of torque. Allison transmissions send the power to either two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. The truck is a joint venture with Navistar, which will build the chassis and assemble the vehicles at its factory in Springfield, Ohio. According to Navistar, it plans to add 300 jobs and invest more than $12 million in facility upgrades and state-of-the-art equipment to produce the new vehicles. The trucks go into production later this year. Navistar will reveal its version closer to production. Plug-in hybrid vehicles such as the Honda Clarity are likely to play an increasingly significant role in the majority of automobiles in the near future. Still, Honda is hedging its bets when it comes to future propulsion systems and has also developed hydrogen electric and battery electric versions of the Clarity. For now, they're only available for lease in California and Oregon. The mid-size sedan is similar to the Honda Accord in length, width and height, but the Clarity is about 7.6 cm shorter between the front and rear wheels. The Clarity also weighs about 360 kg more than the Accord, mostly due to the heft of the lithium-ion battery pack located beneath the passenger area. The styling of the Accord and Clarity are somewhat similar, particularly when it comes to their swept-back roof lines, but the Clarity's slightly awkward-looking rear fenders, designed for maximum aero efficiency, have a negative effect on an otherwise passably pleasant shape. Also for aerodynamic and packaging reasons, the Clarity's rump is stubbier than the Accord's, but a glass panel below the trunk lid helps rearward visibility. The cabin shows no signs of any styling hiccups, however, in fact, the premium materials displayed throughout could easily pass for something from Honda's up-level Acura division. The central piece is an 8-inch tablet-style touchscreen that displays the available range in EV modes as well as the energy flow to and from the batteries. 
A power charge meter dashboard gauge shows the battery charge level and the energy consumption status between the gasoline engine and electric drive motor. As with all plug-in hybrids, the advantage over the non-plug-in hybrids is EV range. Officially, the Clarity can be driven for up to 75 km before the lithium-ion battery pack is depleted to a point where the 1.5-litre gasoline engine fires up to assist. Its primary job is to keep the batteries charged, but under hard acceleration the gasoline engine also fires up to drive the wheels. Doing so will likely be the only time you'll hear and feel the engine operate, otherwise its existence is barely noticeable. In combined city and highway operation, the Clarity is rated at 2.1 litres per 100 kilometres. Recharge time is acclaimed 2.5 hours using a 240 volt outlet. On its own, the electric motor produces 181 horsepower and 232 pound-feet of torque, while the gasoline assistant puts out 103 horsepower and 98 pound-feet of torque. Combined, there's 212 total system horsepower available. Comparatively, the Toyota Prius Prime plug-in system makes 121 horsepower, while the Ford Fusion Energy plug-in makes 188. Instead of a transmission, the Clarity is fitted with a single-speed controller, much like those used in pure battery electric cars. Driving the Clarity is a smooth and quiet experience. Power is decent for such a hefty sedan, steering is precise and the car's low center of gravity seems to help it hug the road. Drivers can select from normal, sport and econ modes. A separate HV button can be activated for all three. It's used to recharge the batteries to 58% of capacity before automatically switching off. Steering wheel mounted deceleration selectors act like hand operated brake pedals to add or reduce the regenerative braking energy fed into the batteries. The Clarity plug-in hybrid is estimated to have a 547 km range. Pricing starts at $39,900, including destination charges, with the usual assortment of comfort items plus automated safety technologies such as emergency braking and lane keeping assist. The touring package adds leather trim seats, heated and power adjustable in front, faux suede dashboard trim and a navigation system. With Honda's intention to electrify two-thirds of its lineup by 2030, there's a lot riding on the Clarity's shoulders. It won't win over crowds on its looks alone, but its smooth and quiet drive might just be enough.